Hello everybody and welcome to another Warriors Wednesdays and today we're checking out Warriors Orochi 4. I feel like I should have done this one a long time ago because Warriors Orochi is the combination series that brings together a lot of the heroes from Dynasty Warriors and from Samurai Warriors as well as a couple of unique and original heroes as well and you know mashes them together and adds a lot of really inter interesting functions especially the fourth game. Um, Let's see, so my party this time is going to be who you see right in front of you. On the left we have uh, Shahoba. Let me switch over to my party. Yeah, so we have Shahoba. He is a character from Dynasty Warriors. Um, let's see, Shahoba is the son of Shaho Yuan, who has been in Dynasty Warriors for a long time. I think he originated in the third game, and this is his son, um, Shahoba. Anyway, next we have Guan Yinping, who is the daughter of Guan Yu, also from Dynasty Warriors. Uh, she fights on the Shu side there. And our third character is going to be Naotora Lee, who originated in Samurai Warriors 4. And I really like, uh, next to the character's name, you can see, you know, what game they originated in. And in fact, if I go into all the characters that I have unlocked right now, which is a paltry sum, um, as this game has over, it loves to tout it, over 170 characters. But anyway, you can see, like, okay, so he came from Samurai Warriors 1, uh, Samurai Warriors 4, 3, and then for the Dynasty Warriors characters, they just tell you which army that they, they fought in, but I'm pretty sure if you look at their character information, it does tell you where they came from. So, you know, normal mashup stuff. Um, you also have four support characters to choose from, and you can also choose a different horse. I like this walnut color horse, and uh, let's kind of mix up our support characters just so we can have a colorful team. So, uh, yeah, we'll get Sun, Sun Shen. Uh, then we'll get Jashu. Uh, Sushu is fine. Shushu. Sushu. Shushu. That's his name. And, uh, oh, this girl. Gracia from Samurai Warriors 2. Okay, yeah, we got red, blue, pink, and red, blue, green, and pink. Okay. All right, anyway, um, I've already unlocked all of the moves that these three characters can do. And I chose them for a reason because they have some really, really cool stuff. Um, I'm gonna go to an early mission here because it's gonna help me talking about a really unique function in this game And that is the the magic system um, These characters don't just play exactly like they do in Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors They retain a lot of their functions, but in many ways they're changed um, some of them. It's quite interesting um, I don't have I don't have Sun Chun on my team But uh, Sun Chun uses a different weapon than he does in Dynasty Warriors 8 uh, he uses the Flame Sword, which was a DLC weapon in Dynasty Warriors 8. And uh, I guess they thought just having the regular sword was a little bit too boring for him. So they went ahead and give, gave that to him. Um, I believe he also uses that in Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. So they went ahead and used the updated version of him. Anyway, I have Shahuba here. We have three characters and a lot of systems to talk about. So let's just get started. Um, let's take a look at Shahuba's uh, attacks. So we can see he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 standard attacks, uh, C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to C6, and his C2 and his C4 are extendable by one more move. Uh, so let's just go ahead and take a look at his standard attacks, and I just want to note, his weapon is awesome. It's basically like an engine-powered spear. It's crazy. Um, this is the weapon that they give him in Dynasty Warriors as well. You know, they don't, they don't care. <laughs> Especially Dynasty Warriors 8 loves to be crazy. Um, so let's take a look at his normal string. So yeah, not, not a lot of a range, but I really think he makes up for it with his other attacks. So let's take a look at his C2. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> yeah, so he rides that right up into the air. Uh, let's extend that. Oh, that was a C3, my bad. Oh, oh, oh he's going crazy. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Whoa! <laughs> so he can add on that big dash into multiple attacks, it seems. Oh, sorry, that's his C2. Um, let me take a look at that again. Okay, so C... C2, C3. Okay, C3 is extendable. Here we are. So this one, where he jumps forward, fly, flies up, and then you can dive back down again. It's crazy! Uh, let's take a look at his C4. One, two, three. Big spinning attack. Very cool. Uh, C5. Two, three, four. This one should be extendable. Whoa! Fantastic. 
Um, and his C6 is the last thing I haven't looked at. Wow. Ah, man, his, his dashing attack's really great, too. Like, I'm just gonna zip right over to you. Alright, anyway. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, so that's the one that gives him, um... You can choose where he's gonna land. Let's do that one again. So yeah, I have a limited amount of time, and then I have him land right down there. Very cool. Um, I don't remember him doing that in Dynasty Warriors 8, but maybe I didn't level him up all the way. Okay, uh, let's jump down and let's use some magic before we start switching to our other characters. I have a lot of other systems to talk about too, but if you look underneath Shahuba's portrait, you see this circle. That is my magic meter. When I hold down the right shoulder button, I'm playing this on the Switch, by the way, I can then use my normal weak magic. It doesn't take away that much of my magic bar. Um, his actually affects a lot of characters, but it doesn't do a huge amount of damage. You can actually use this while while running. Yeah, it, it goes really quick. Um, if you wait for that magic bar to be full, you can then do a charge magic attack, which is telling me to do right now. And for Shahuba, that's this. And then I press the button to send out a bunch of arrows. This is going to use all my magic, but it's much more powerful than the last one. Um, he also has another magic attack, which I have to wait for the bar to be filled completely. Pretty sure that that goes up faster by me attacking enemies, so let's just... Let's beat a couple of them, but I don't want to kill this whole crowd just yet. Okay, so his charge magic attack, which I believe also... Yeah, it does take up one Muso bar to do too, but it's even more powerful. Um, all of this is filling up the interior of that magic circle, which when it gets totally full, I can do a, a magic attack that is kind of like a big nuke. You know, it uses, well, the animation uses all seven of the characters that I chose. My three playable characters and the four support characters, so you can kind of make it look however you like. Um, so, in this game, you actually control three different characters. When I press the right or left triggers, I then will switch between my three characters that I chose. Um, you can do this be fluidly, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to wait until you're standing still or anything. Um, the character doesn't continue in the combo that you left off on. But yeah, still, um, this is used in a number of ways. For one thing, when a character takes damage in this game, and when you're hit, you take way more damage in this game than other Warriors games. Your characters cannot really take many hits at all. And the only way for them to heal is for you to switch off of them for a little bit. So character switching is very, very important. You enter all battles in this game with at least three characters. Um, there are also three different types of warriors. You have strength type warriors, which Shahuba is. Um, I imagine uh, he has, you know, kind of enhanced stats. But the other types have extra abilities. Uh, let's see, Guan Yinping is a speed type character. So she's actually given an air dodge, like that. Um, you can flip forward. Also, when you flip, if you've been like hit by an enemy and knocked into the air, you can use this to get a little bit more control back instead of just flipping right where you are. You know, you can you can ev evade them while also um, recovering from being hit. Uh, the other type is, I guess what you call like a tech character. Whenever I hit anyone and I hit the, the jump button, I do this quick dodge through which basically means I always have a dodge. I don't have to wait until, you know, I finish attacking and move out of the way. Um, this isn't one of the, I guess, the Hyrule Warriors style uh, Warriors games where all characters dodge, dodge, dodge all the time. Only the tech characters are going to have the dodge here. You can also just use it to completely overwhelm enemies. I find the tech characters don't really have a lot of wide, wide range hitting attacks. But they are really, really good at one-on-one -on -one fights. Uh, probably way better. Other characters tend to uh, fly way past. Um, now Tora Lee is also a Samurai Warriors character, and the Samurai Warriors characters are known for their hyper attacks. When you press the heavy attack button instead of a heavy attack, which I didn't use Shaho Ba's, I forgot to mention that. When you activate his uh, C1, he basically just gets to um, attack faster. He kind of turns on the engine, he revs it up, and you can see the, the flames shooting out of the side of that. Um, however, for Naotora Lee, her heavy attack is this series of very forward-flying uh, attack strengths. And she actually has a couple extra combos that go onto that. They're not, like, super advanced or anything. Like, that's her C2. Her hyper C2, I should call it. Um, but yeah, all of the Samurai Warriors characters have that, true to their original form. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's take a look at Guan Yinping next. Um, first, we'll start with her standard attack string by looking at her player info. Here you are. 
Okay, so same same deal as Shaho Ba. She has six standard attacks and uh, up to a C6 combo. So let's take a look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, her weapon's really interesting. Kind of looks like one of those poles that you use to balance water on. <laughs> I mean, Guan Yin Ping definitely didn't see any combat, so... Um, yeah. Gotta give her something, I suppose. But her other combos are really a lot of fun. So let's take a look at her C1. Pounds forward. Smack. Smack. Okay, now how about her C2? Standard launcher. Yeah, pretty normal. C3. One, two. One, two. Let's try that again. One, two, come on. There we go. And so this is one she picks up a giant boulder from the ground. Um, the joke with Guan Yin Ping is that she is the daughter of Guan Yu. Guan Yu, often called the god of war, one of the strongest men that ever lived. Seriously, his story, true or not, is really an amazing one. Definitely recommend looking into it. But Guan Yin Ping's joke in the Dynasty Warriors games is that she's like frighteningly strong, even though she looks like a, you know, a little skinny girl. And so they give that to her here with this awesome, awesome attack. Love that one. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at her next one. One, two, three. All right. So I believe what she's doing is she's powering herself up there. Um, she also does that in Dynasty Warriors 8. Um, that's like her EX attack in Dynasty Warriors 8. So she retains that and then she's more powerful while she has this kind of aura around her. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. One, two, three, four, five. C6 is that big spin. One, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, I thought I forgot one, and uh, it looked like I did. One, two, three, four. Okay, so her C5 is this one. Throws a thing up there and lets it land on people in front of her. Um, now let's look at her magic, because she is also using a different uh, magical item. And in fact, uh, the characters don't... Some of the characters share the same magical item, which means their magic attacks are the same. But there are a lot more than the ones that I'm showing here. I'm just showing off three magical uh, items. So... Let's do her normal magic. There we go. So she sends out a fire blast, and it's really easy to see how you can do this one while running. Um, the animation's a lot more fluid than the one for Shao Ba. So you can just kind of run through it. It seems like every third one is this special big one. Uh, next up we have her, uh, I guess it's her charge magic, which I gotta wait for it to be full. Maybe I'll hit some people to get that one off. And oh boy, I can't wait to do this. Because all I have to say is Kamehameha! Yeah! <laughs> look at that! Crazy. Um, really cool. I like it. Uh, let's take a look at her unique magic. And in fact, I'm already ready for my big unity attack, but I'm gonna hang on to it. I leveled up. How nice. Alright, so let's use her unique attack. Da da da! So she does a big spin and throws her fire pillar forward, which then explodes. Clears out lots and lots of people. That's the way that you get lots of KOs in this game, as well as your unique attacks. Um, oh, that I forgot to mention is that when you're using magic and you press, I guess, on the Switch controller, it's the B button on the PlayStation 4. It'd be the X button or cross button. Uh, you summon your horse. So that's how you get your horse in this game. I like how it almost kind of makes sense how the horse comes out of nowhere in this one, because you're literally using magic to summon it. Uh, our last character is Naruto Ali. And let's take a look at her player info. Okay, so as you can see, her attack string is way longer. I count uh, eight standard attacks, but she only has a C... Uh, oh, sh let's see. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't have C1 because she has hyper attacks. But yeah, so she has a C2, C2, C3, C4, C5. And then her hyper attacks, which also all have endings. So yeah, let's take a look what she does. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Doesn't really go very far at all, but again, very good for fighting a single target like this. I just want to focus all that damage onto one person and not trying to get KOs. Uh, let's look at her uh, normal C2. Yep, it's a launcher, as you might expect. Uh, how about her C3? I'm getting shot by arrows, it seems. There we go. Yeah, that one's nice. Again, very single target focused. Has a couple hits in there, but it really doesn't travel that far. Yeah, I can focus all of those onto Liu Kang there. Uh, how about her C4? Okay, so that one actually has a little bit of distance, but it doesn't really seem to stretch that far out. So again, the tech characters really don't have that, uh, you know, KO 
accumulating power as other ones do. Uh, now let's look at her hyper attacks. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, she's got eight of those, and she has a C2, one, two, C3, one, two, three, C4, <laughs> one, two, three, four, C5, one, two, three, four, five, C6, one, two, three, four, five, six, C7. <laughs> yeah, um, I wouldn't reliably try to count those in my head. It's kind of annoying to get, you know, past the fives. I think I understand why they usually stop things at C6. Uh, makes a lot of sense now that we see. But anyway, let's take a look at her combo. So she has that little goblet for her magic item. So she kind of summons up this thing, which again, um, it kind of brings your enemies into one place. Also fitting her playstyle of focusing all the damage onto single targets. Like, I just want to trap them here, and then just obliterate these people. Uh, let's look at her charge one. There we are. Targets lots of people, and then blast them all. Whoa, I literally melted the base captain, poor guy. Uh, okay, while we wait for her last one to go, why don't we go ahead and go to that, uh, that mission target. Alright, so yeah, we're ready for her uh, unique attack, and let's do that. So yeah, everyone does have a unique magical attack there. Um, so even though characters are, like, someone else is also using the same goblet as her, she's not going to have that same attack. So there is at least that much variety and uniqueness in the characters, which I like. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, now's a good chance for me to use my... Uh, Unity? I think it's called Unity attack. So once I have... Um, you have to use magic in order to fill up that uh, middle bar. It's been full for a while, but it's the... It's it's actually a bar that's inside of the circle that shows how much magic I have. Uh, once it's full, you pull down both triggers to do this. I'll just let it play out. Yep, there's all the characters I brought along. And we spirit bomb the enemy, doing tons of damage, and you actually get extra rewards. You see I'm getting gems, which I can use to upgrade, like, my base, which, like, I can use to increase the amount of experience I get, or increase all characters' defense or offense, etc. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a benefit to using your magic, getting off those unity attacks as much as you can. Uh, kind of a little mini-meta game, meta, mini game to keep your, uh, your mind on all the things that you should probably be doing. I mean, the magic's so powerful, I don't know why you wouldn't want to use it. Um, I kind of find the normal magic to be a little bit underpowered. Like, it's nice that this one has that extra effect um, of gathering in the enemies. But personally, I, I find it way more useful to just charge up and uh, use the, the charge magic or the unique magic. But that's just me. Anyway, let's beat Lian Shu here. Oh yeah, here's another thing. So Lian Shu... Uh, I think she just had, like, the boring crossbow weapon in Dynasty Warriors 8. But here she's using the Mandarin Duck Hooks, which was a DLC weapon in Dynasty Warriors 8. So they wanted to give her kind of her own unique weapon, but it was never really acknowledged as being her unique weapon in Dynasty Warriors 8. Um, unfortunately, my Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires game got lost in the mail, and I've been waiting for it to come for the last two months and discovered that it's, it's lost, so I'm going to have to order a new copy. I already got my refund for it, no worries. Um, but I would assume that in, uh, Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires, Lian Shu's weapon is those duck hooks. Oh, that's not the button I wanted. This is the button I wanted. So yeah, I just want to take out Lu Shun here, so let's kick his ass. So yeah, Warriors Orochi... Really, really interesting series. I like how um, it's not really as, you know, of a normal combination as you might think. I like how, you know, there's a lot of its own unique mechanics mixed in with the classic gameplay of these characters that we all know, know and love. Um, well, I hope that we all know and love. It's actually a good way to get exposed to a lot of the Dynasty Warriors and uh, Samurai Warriors characters if you don't know them. You get to see these awesome uh, movesets all in one game. So it's, also, it's a pretty good value for your money, I'd say. Um, downside of this game is uh, the story mode is about all you really get for it. Um, there is an extra mode. It's an online mode, and no one plays it anymore. So yeah, it's pretty much just story mode. But each story mode does, ha does have individual side missions. Anyway, it's... it's. 
I'm, I'm doing this Warriors Wednesday in the wake of just discovering that Warriors Orochi 4 Ultimate has been announced and it's going to be coming out this December. And so I'm really, like I probably say in my uh, my coverage video for that game, I'm really hoping that they add in some kind of late game mode because this game deserves a lot more to do with how much fun and complexity that there is in the actual battle mechanics. But yeah, as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Hope you join me next time. Uh, do all the stuff you got to do now. Subscribe. Give me a dollar on Patreon. That would be really, really nice, actually. Um, that's all. <laughs> Bye!